there is a deadly conversation taking place in broad daylight and also under the cover of darkness. This horrifying dialogue is not overheard in secret places, nor is it found hidden among the obscure. This howling of the heavens is seen and heard in every sky throughout our world. The conversation of whether UFOs exist or not is a conversation that the wise will no longer debate, for it is a debate for fools. The evidence is so pervasive and so ubiquitous that it can no longer be seen as a belief. This evidence is definitely overwhelming, and yet the purpose of their visitation is the only thing that is still hidden. A clue is here, and here, and here. These simple UFO patterns serve as a greeting and also a warning to mankind. The first understanding of this formation is actually a greeting. A greeting that requires one to understand the most well-known constellation in the world, Orion. The second part of this understanding is its connection to the pyramids of Egypt and the pyramids of the Americas. This connection creates an aha moment in the mind and it also serves as an understanding. Believe it or not, this is the first step in alien human interspecies communication. However, the second part of this communication is hidden and also misunderstood by our world governments. And understanding it will send ice through your veins. The pyramids of Africa are all linked together with the pyramids of North America. The Egyptians, the Mayans, and the Aztecs are all linked together as one. They were miles apart and yet they were all one culture and one people. And the reason why is because they all share the same father. And he is here. This ancient sculpture was found among the ruins of the Mayan civilization, and it represents an alien language. It is also an ancient clue, which means it possesses supreme knowledge. This is the face of our teacher and the face of our father. And it is also something even more powerful than that. It is also an alien codex. It is a transmission of code, an enigma. It is deliberately left upon this earth and left to us for only one purpose, to warn us of something that is to come. Unbelievably, this alien work is actually religious, as were all building projects of the ancient world. Today we believe that religion means faith or belief. In the ancient world, it meant far more than that and faith was the least of them. The religions of the ancient world had little to do with faith and everything to do with knowledge. For in the ancient world, your faith did not make you great. Your wisdom did. A man who understood the purpose of the Great Pyramid was one who was blessed with the God of knowledge and also eternal life. One who could unravel the mystery of the Sphinx was said to be one of supreme knowledge who would also be blessed with power and a crown of God and authority. In the ancient world, the Word of God says, in all you're getting in life, get knowledge, get wisdom, because wisdom is worth more than silver and gold. 
The Egyptians and the Mayans tell us that time moves in a circle, a repeating circle, a cycle of living and dying on the same world, over and over again. What is old is new again. What is created will be created again. And there is nothing new under the sun. They left us their religion and also that which was holy. And what was holy to the ancient world was knowledge. An example of the dichotomy that separates their religion from ours is here. This ancient carving of a woman has been seen in our world for nearly 4,000 years. It is called the Queen of the Night Relief. And every scholar and every professor who tells her tale calls her Lilith. She is said to be evil and the first wife of Adam, and Adam being the first man that God ever created on this earth. When man began mass-producing books and mass-producing media, a horrible crime was committed. And the crime was calling this innocent woman a devil. A misjudgment that began disseminating this oral archaeological tradition that is more based on their faith and has nothing to do with truth at all. This evil woman that is said to be Adam's first wife is actually one of the most powerful and glorious women ever to set foot on this earth. This holy woman is actually a queen. Her name is debated, but her position is undeniable. Notice what is in her hands. Look closer. This ancient symbol is actually Egyptian, and it is called a Shen, and it means immortality, eternal life. Anyone in the ancient world who holds this symbol indicates that they are given power, authority, and they will also live forever. Nevertheless, this woman is so powerful that she not only has one symbol of eternal life, she has two. Yes, this is not the evil wife of Adam as the world would have you believe. And in fact, she is far more important than that. The religious have taught the world that she is evil because of her feet. Look at them. Surely, she is the work of the devil. And then again, no. Her feet are not what makes her evil at all. And in fact, they are what makes her holy. The one with wisdom would look closer, and they would notice it's not the burning feet of a devil. These are the talons of a bird. And that is the clue. This woman has the feet of a bird, and she also has wings on her back. And all of this can only mean one thing. This woman could fly. She is more than a woman, more than a queen. This female is a goddess and the symbol of her power and immortality are also found in her hands. A symbol that is also found in the hands of every great Sumerian king, Babylonian king, and even Egyptian kings. This goddess stands upon our next clue, a lion. And this is no ordinary lion, for this lion represents the land of Egypt and it is the original design of the Sphinx. The riddle of the Sphinx is a riddle no more, for the Sphinx represents the face of the sun. And if the Sphinx represents the sun, this means this woman can only be 
the goddess, the queen, Isis. She is the queen of heaven and the keeper of holy knowledge, powerful knowledge, and unto the children who are born of this earth, today she is giving it to us. We know that this queen can fly, and we also know that she stands upon the land of Egypt. But what of these two large owls? What are they? And what do they mean? These two are the ties that bind. In the ancient world, the sun was our gateway to heaven, and the ancients left us this knowledge everywhere. And although our surviving indigenous people called these drawings space peoples, they also said they looked like something else, owls. Large, wide-eyed owls. And we cannot dismiss these peoples in any way. Why? Because today, when we see these powerful eyes, we say the exact same thing. This is a satellite image of space. And in this image, you will see what they saw 5,000 years ago. These are two black holes they are connected together. But then again, they look like an owl. An owl represents the entryway into heaven and into the house of God. This owl is the opening of a wormhole, or what the ancients would call a stargate. And yet, there is another ancient riddle that has troubled the faithful more than anything else. And that is the worship of animals. Why do we do it? Whether a bird, an elephant, a cow, a serpent, or a lamb, animals play a significant part of our religious beliefs. In nearly every part of our world, there is a reverence, a beauty, and a worship for four-legged beings, and one more than any other, and that is cattle. The cow or the bull is one of the most holiest symbols of God in the world, and it has been deified for thousands of years. All over the world we find writings, paintings, and hieroglyphs of cows and the worship of them. More than half the world honors them and worships them, and at the same time, they have no knowledge as to why. To them, it is a belief, a faith, and yet they believe even without knowing. In the ancient world, the Apis bull was very holy, and even more than it is today. And if we look back 50,000 years, we find it was just as important to prehistoric man as it is to us. Nevertheless, if we do look back, we will know why. And once we know why, none of us will ever be the same. In nearly all of the cave paintings, there are always pictures of a bull or a cow. And what is important about these paintings is the fact that they are always painted on the ceiling and usually with a cloudy sky or a night sky. The ceiling forces you to look up and this act in itself is the clue. In order to find the origin of this apis bull that is holy, one must look to the heavens and to the origins of our world's various faiths. And that is Egypt. The pyramid is created to represent the sun, and yet it is created not in a circle, but instead a square. All over the world, every sun monument is created not as a sphere, but as a square, 
whether Mayan, Incan, Aztec, Egyptian, or African, the sun is always a square. And the reason is, in the ancient world, near the summer solstice or the winter solstice, a hole will appear on the sun. And invariably, it will be a square. And when a square appears on the sun, it means the time of man has come. We have matured. And it is also something even more powerful. It is an invitation to the holiest place of all, the place of the Apis Bull. Here is the worship of the Apis Bull. And here is the square on the sun. And the knowledge of it all is here. Once you enter this square hole in the sun, you will enter a gateway. You will travel through what we call a wormhole. You will begin an interstellar space flight throughout the cosmos that mankind has taken for more than a hundred thousand years. We will travel through this wormhole and when we come out, we will be here. When we leave the sun, we will exit here in this area of the constellation of Taurus the Bull. And how we know this is because of this, a square. The gate of the sun and this holy constellation are linked together. To confirm this conception, all one has to do is return to Egypt. If we go to Egypt, we will find a confirmation of this knowledge that is so overpowering to the mind that it will stun you into silence. Although the doubting Thomas will say, this square is only a coincidence. These two subjects have nothing in common. It's pure fantasy. It's imagination. It couldn't possibly be true. It is true. And the confirmation of the truth is here. When the Egyptians worshipped the Apis bull, they also worshipped the sun and the two were always linked together as an entryway and an exit way into the cosmos. Here is an ancient Apis bull that was worshipped for thousands of years. On the head of this ancient and holy creature is the sun and with it the power of the serpent. Notice what appears to be a crack or damage at the top of this Apis Bull Sun Monument. To the common eye, it's just an old piece of artwork, a 3,000 year old broken statue of the sun, and yet it is the holiest knowledge you will ever see. And now, a satellite view of this same object today. Yes, this is the hole in the sun that they saw 5,000 years ago. A hole exactly like what we see today. Walk away from what you have been taught of Egypt. Walk away from it. There is no proof more powerful than this. A hole in the sun. A view that requires a satellite. The hope of our future rests with the faithful. And in the end, it is the faithful who will determine how our world ends. Whether scientist, pragmatist, or atheist, one must come to understand the importance of faith. All of the words of God tells us that our end comes. And although our numbers are as the sand of the sea, only a few of us will survive. The end of the world is a fiery one, 
And yet all words of God on this earth, they tell us why. And the reason is because we refuse knowledge and we refuse to accept knowledge. In the late 11th century, a satanic creation came upon this earth. And when it came upon this earth, it filled the faithful with a horror and a fear that they've never seen before. It was so foreboding that men could not even look upon it for fear of it. This vile and demonic spawn of hell was called a dinner fork. Yes, it is a sad thing to say, and yet it is all truth. This humble addition to our dinner table was called by the faithful the work of the devil. They recoiled at the creation of something that would interfere with one eating from hand to mouth. And this scenario is not unique. And there is yet more. Music instruments, when they were first created, were also called the work of the devil. When the electric light bulb was invented, it too was called the work of the devil. When the automobile, when the airplane, and even when medicine that would save your life was created, it was called the work of the devil. These examples are not meant to be disparaging, and instead they are here to highlight the inability for the faithful to accept wisdom and new knowledge. Their first impression of anything that they don't understand is automatically called the work of evil. The reason these examples are so important is because, in the end, it will be the faithful who will determine what happens to the planet. It will be the religious who will decide what happens to the rest of us. There are nearly six billion peoples of faith on this earth, which means only they have the power to change it. Their numbers alone will tell us what will happen to the rest of us. In the future, new knowledge will come, and it will come with earth changes that will threaten the life of earth. It is then when we will need the Muslim, we will need the Jew, the Christian, and the Hindu, and all peoples of faith, and we will need them, because it will be a time when we must unite. Whether we believe in a supreme being or not, our end is in the hands of the faithful. They will determine whether we accept the new world or whether we live or die. Our first steps begin here. These are clues left to us from the last great civilization on Earth, the Mayans. These stela represent a calendar of seasons and times. A time for moving, a time for traveling, planting, and also a time for gathering. And yet, every Mayan glyph shows them moving while crouching and being loaded with cases and supplies. It appears to be nothing of note, and at the same time, it is giving us one of our greatest clues about our past a clue that is repeated all over the world. When we look to Egypt, you will see something. And yet, when we see it, we see nothing. What is strange about this is the fact that we all see the same thing, and yet, we all see nothing. We see a goddess, replete with holy symbols and holy accoutrements and all the while extending her arms in a train of beautifully feathered wings. 
This unobtrusive vision of the ancient world and its understanding has evaded man's intellect for thousands of years. The Mayans and the Egyptians both have similar glyphs, and yet there is a clue that each of them share, and that is they both represent traveling, moving, and flying to another place. It is a simple deduction, common understanding, and yet there is glory here. Great, great glory. The Egyptian queen only reveals her feathers in order to indicate flight. And yet, whenever the queen is saying flight, she is always seen being seated. And that is the clue. What bird have you ever seen that flies while sitting down? None. This revealing is what makes this woman a goddess. And this is what makes the ancients better than we. Because the only way to fly while sitting down is here. The serpent with wings. Yes, children of Earth, they could fly 10,000 years before we could. The traveling of the ancients was much as it is today. And today, we too fly while sitting down. It is a part of our history and a part of our future. And accepting this as a reality is critical to our survival. The ancient female always represented knowledge, power, wisdom. And she also represented something else. The universe. We have to walk away from what we believe and what we have been taught and accept a knowledge and a wisdom that is too good for us. A goddess is everywhere in the ancient world, and they always represent understanding, wisdom, and enlightenment. And yet each stela and each painting hides a glorious clue. This Egyptian carving is one of the most well-known works in the world, and this humble creation is called the Bee Goddess. Our archaeologists and our historians tell us that there was an obsession and a love for insects in the ancient world. They recite this understanding in every college and in every university, and even more, in every scholarly lecture. They tell the world the story of Egypt, a story of insect worship. Bugs, spiders, dung beetles, ants, and bees. How can this be an enlightened nation if they were fascinated with insects? The answer is, they weren't. They never worshipped bugs and they never glorified insects. And our stories about their history only glorifies our own ignorance. Although insects are seen all over the land of Egypt, you will find in the end, they aren't. It is a delusion, a fantasy, a misrepresentation of truth and wisdom, and not on their part, but on ours. We look at our ancient forefathers with arrogant eyes, for we really think we are better than they, and we are not. Ancient Egypt was not a male-dominated culture as many believe, and the veneration of the female is found all over the land. The female was a teacher, a queen, and a goddess. This is one of the most well-known articles of religion in Egypt. It is a depiction of a woman of worship, and it is also what many would call the worship of an insect. She has the body of a woman with the posterior of a bee. And all of this was the reason why the female was called the bee goddess. 
Her wings are short, and her breasts are supple, and beneath her is the sweet nectar of flowers in bloom. Nonetheless, remember, in ancient Egypt, all is not what it seems, and thus the eye of the enlightened always sees something else. Look at the petals on these flowers, and now look at this goddess. A woman and an insect combined to do what? To give us a clue. Each writing of an insect is not to show the worship of it, but instead it is to highlight its attributes. Something unique about that particular insect has a God characteristic, and that characteristic, when revealed, reveals the God. With the depiction of any insect, it can be its eyes, its legs, or its sound. Look again, and now open your mind. These are not flowers at all, and this woman is not a bee. No, she is not a bee, but she sounds exactly like one. And her sound alone unlocks this 10,000-year-old mystery. Listen, this is the actual sound of a bee. And although we believe these petals to be two flowers, they are not. Listen, and now look at these flowers. Stand still and see the revealing of the bee goddess. Yes, this goddess is actually flight. And that which we once believed were two flowers are actually propellers, and the sound of the engine is the sound of the bee, and the two are nearly identical. It is glory, and it is power, and in the ancient world, she who has the ability to fly is more than a woman. She is a god. The power of flight in the ancient world was the difference between being a mere mortal and being a deity. It is a powerful display of expertise, knowledge, and wisdom. And yet it is all for naught if we choose to disbelieve them. All of this is proof that we have done this before. We have all been here before. And we all died. The proof of flight is everywhere in the ancient world, and our ability to understand it and to accept it will determine if we will survive. A great and powerful warning is given to us, and it has been staring us in the face for nearly 2,000 years. Figures, lines, and mysteries and no one on this planet knows what they mean or why they were created. And the reason no one knows is because we look upon every ancient creation as inferior to our own misguided standard of intellect. And yet, as intelligent as we claim to be and as superior as we believe we are, not one of us has unlocked its knowledge. Nevertheless, these ancient, dusted, and derided lines holds the answers to the greatest secrets of all time. It is a revealing of wisdom that is so powerful that it will transform our entire world. And yet, we cannot understand them until we can accept the fact that they were greater than us. 
and there is no place on earth that displays this reality more than Tiwanaku, Bolivia. It is a creation that has had men scratching their heads for more than 2,000 years. It is quizzical and perplexing, and yet its understanding and its answer is patently obvious to one who is willing to accept the impossible. To understand this figure, one must do something that is counterintuitive to intelligence, and that is to ignore it. Don't look upon this ragged figure or its infantile artwork, and instead, look at what is beneath it, because what is beneath it holds all the knowledge. What is beneath it is a door, a doorway, and a doorway is an entryway that will ultimately lead you somewhere else. It may seem to be a relic of a bygone era, and it may also appear to be incomplete and lacking in structure and knowledge. To the contrary, it is vibrant, brilliant, and bustling with undiscovered awareness, shouting, crying, and begging for one of us to look closer. The doorway is the key, and what makes it a key is the fact that it unlocks hidden and ancient mysteries all over the world. A doorway is always found in holy places, and it is created in every record and every holy carving depicting the afterlife. And yet, what is the most astounding part of this doorway is the fact that it was found in Nazca, Peru. Not only are there lines here, there is also a door, a doorway. It is a mountainous doorway, and it also has the graven image that shows a strange alien who appears to be greeting our new world. A doorway as plain and as common as it may be is ubiquitous in holy carvings. Whether Sumerian, Babylonian, Egyptian, it's everywhere. And although Sumeria was the oldest ancient civilization on earth, astoundingly, when this doorway is found in their ancient culture, it is called a gateway. The doorway was found to be a mystical symbol and a representation of the heavens and the netherworld. And yet what confirms the purpose of this doorway is found in its quiet, ancient, and unassuming name. And the name is Tiwanaku. And this name means the Gate of the Sun. This stone structure is created to represent the sun, and its symbolism and its intricate artwork are created for one purpose. It is created for us. It has been a mystery for more than 2,000 years. And again, it is only a mystery because we refuse knowledge and we refuse to listen. This image of a ragged and broken king has a Mayan face and an Egyptian flair. And both of these things mean, look closer. He has the face of the sun and the body of a man, and his artwork represents the glowing face of the sun. In his hands are the staff of his authority, as they are two serpents, which represent authority and power. Then again, look at this enhanced version of this stela, and you will see something staggering. And that is, these aren't serpents in his hands. These are actually birds. This sun god is holding two birds as his staff of power. 
and this meaning couldn't be clearer. The sun has a doorway, and this creation is called the gate of the sun, and to enter into it requires that which the birds of the air find to be common, flight. Flight is the key. It represents knowledge, information, and understanding. And accepting the fact that the ancients could fly is critical to whether we do. This king is both sun and God, and yet he holds these two birds with the hands of a man. This means that this knowledge of this God is made for man. It is telling us that mankind must harness the power of flight in order to reach this doorway, this sun gate. The reason this stela has remained a mystery for 2,000 years is because we were too young to understand it. All pyramids, hieroglyphs, and stelas are created to be understood only when we reach the technological age. Why? Because it is only in the technological age where we have the power to leave the earth and also the power to change our fate. The ancient prophecy given to modern man states that we won't be able to reach the sun gate without the power of flight. Although basic and rudimentary mechanics can get us in the air, it's not enough to reach the sun. In short, they are telling us we need more power and lots of it. Unbelievably, what will give power to our fledgling wings is found within this stela, a message, a code that we will only understand when we achieve technology because technology gives us more power. CPU processing power. The mechanical age was never enough to help us. We needed technology. The more power we can push into a small space means more capability, high capacity power in a small engine. It is the intelligent design of spaceflight. The power of the sun regulated by a small, diminutive sun chip. This connection could not be more obvious. Computer technology, nanotechnology, and quantum technology. It is the age that they have been waiting for. We are no longer children, and we now have matured. We now have the ability to reach the unreachable, and that is the house of our Creator. It is a powerful transformation of flesh and spirit, for these new abilities will change who we are and change our purpose. This new technology gives us the power and the ability to fly, and not just to fly around the Earth, but also interstellar space. The sun is the litmus test for man, and our ability to reach it is the test of our faith. For when we do, we will become something different than what we are. Reaching it will create a complete transformation, and we will no longer be human anymore. In the ancient world, the sun is always represented as a pyramid, and as common as these structures may be, they contain a blessing and a curse, celebration and fear, and the reason is here. This is the Aztec Pyramid of the Sun, and it is called Teotihuacan. And this strange name represents the sun, and it also represents our new terrifying human ability. Teotihuacan is ancient, and yet it tells us something that our forefathers did before us. Because this name actually means the place where man became God. 
This level of accomplishment signals the end of our world, as it has for the last 100 million years. And for 100 million years, we have been hearing the voices of our ancestors, hearing the voices of the heavens. A cave painting warning us, a stela, and desert lines, all warning us of something that is to come. If this story appears to be a bit too familiar, it is. The knowledge of the Stargate is found in nearly every ancient civilization in the world. It is a story that is repeated over and over again. And yet, what is so sad about this story is that every nation that comes to the understanding of this knowledge and every nation that reaches into the gate of the sun are never heard from ever again. Their nation and the world is completely destroyed. The knowledge of the Stargate is always the last knowledge ever given on Earth. And after that, mankind is destroyed. Human beings are made to be wise and created to give ear to learning and achievement. And yet, if we refuse knowledge, and if we refuse learning, then we are all wiped away. The Stargate is our last word, and it is also our last warning. The Earth is coming to an end, and if we do not listen, then what will we build to warn the next humans that come after us? And the most disturbing knowledge of all, children of Earth, we may be the last. Every cave, every pyramid, and every obelisk tells us of the Stargate, a gateway to what would otherwise be impossible, and that is a gateway to interstellar travel, a gift which allows us to leave our Earth and our solar system and venture out into the body of the universe a new key which unlocks a dream that is now a reality and each of us can enter and each of us can return. However, when we return, we will no longer be seen as human beings, but instead as celestial beings. We will sing a song that we have never sung and dream a dream that is not because it is a dream come true. And the greater beauty of this knowledge is the fact that we will all live. We will no longer be called human beings. And instead, unto the new children of this earth, when they see us, they will call us the star people. Although we believe it is a journey that is made for science, a journey made for those with privilege. It's not. The people of the earth will ask, who gets to go through this gate in the sun? Who gets to live? The rich and the powerful? What will happen to the rest of us? Are we to be left here on a dying earth? Are we to die? What will happen to us? The answer to this question is a solemn one. And the answer is, we can all go. We can all walk through this gate. 
we can all walk into the cosmos. We can all walk into the kingdom of our God. We can enter the heavens. We can drink with angels. Every one of us can walk into this new world. We can all experience this. Because although the ancients show us a stargate in the sun, they've also shown us something else. There's another one. And this one is right here on Earth. Stunning Conclusion, Invitation Number 8, a full-length feature film, and download and stream the entire series, The Knowledge of the Forever Time, The End Has Come, available September 1st, only on Amazon Prime.